Testing. Are you serious? Are you serious? It's prime time! Live, 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 live. Okay, guys, good to see everybody here. We're going to have a great time tonight. Breaking news, breaking news. Theresa May, Prime Minister of England, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. She may be gone. There's been, we got information, word on the street. I got, I got a phone call. Info came in that 48 letters, enough to remove her of a no confidence vote had been submitted. And now the Huffington Post is also saying they have information it's happened. So if this is the case, if it's the case, there may be in the next day or two a no confidence vote to remove Theresa May as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Why? Failure to implement Brexit. And when she announced yesterday that it wouldn't be done until the end of December 2020, people freaked out. Guys, let me get in there. Let's get this thing started. Are you serious? Got a lot to talk about. Oh, no. Let's get in there right now. Are you serious? Are you serious? <clears throat> wow. Well, you know, we knew. You know, right now there's so much going on. I mean, think about this caravan thing. Okay, this caravan was supposed to wreck the, wreck the election on Trump, but it's, it's, it's backfired. The American public, angry, they, they can see it a mile away, the phoniness of it. They realize that this was all political, and they're very upset that this is even going on. And so Trump's numbers continue to rise. He's running around the country holding rallies. And people are hollering, build the wall, build the wall. This thing really backfired. And, um, uh, you know, I'm telling you, and there's a lot of shifting going on. Now, I just heard Trump today say that it looks like he and Vladimir Putin are going to meet next month. Putin's already offered. He wants to meet with Trump in November. Trump is saying, looks like we're going to get together. We're working on logistics. I don't know for sure, but it looks like it could. And, you know, it was real simple. Trump was waiting until after the midterms to sit down with Putin again. The, where's the Mueller investigation? You notice how quiet that thing's gone? Are they going to drop a, 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 an October surprise? Is it Shocktober? Well, we're going to wait and see. Oh, by the way, Mike from around the world is going to be with us on a special Friday night broadcast. We don't do Friday night broadcast, but we're going to do one this Friday night. It's October 25th. That is the day of the third of the five waves of energy. And that's the night he can talk to us. So we're going to bring him in. We're going to do a special Friday night broadcast. You don't want to miss it on Shocktober and the five waves of energy. That's coming up Friday night. All right. Good to see everybody piling in to our backup YouTube channel. And the name of the backup YouTube channel is Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. The Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. Go ahead and subscribe, guys. Go ahead and subscribe. Uh, we're almost to 7,000 people there right now. And we started out three days ago. Uh, no, two days ago. Now maybe three at 3,500. So we're building that up. Let's build up that backup channel. Get everybody over there. Oh, by the way, we are live at new live stream and Roku Satellite Television. We're also live at Periscope, and we're live at my website. Everybody get over there at paulbegleyprophecy.com. We're also live on the direct radio line. People are dialing the number right now, 605-472-5791. That's 605-472-5791. Use the access code to get in. That's 322 Six five six pound. That's three two two six five six pound. All right, it's good to see everybody. Well, let's get right into it because let's bring in Max to start this thing off. We got a lot to talk about. We got shocking Ebola, 
Polio. Uh, unfortunately, horrible scene in Detroit, Michigan, in these two funeral homes. It's deplorable. It's horrible. Um, we got uh, we got some kind of weird virus. Breaking news in New Jersey: six kids are dead. Twelve are very, very sick. What's going on with all these diseases? Right out of the pages of the Bible, Matthew 24, Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him and said, said uh, Lord, can you tell us what is the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? And Jesus said, well, uh, look, see that you be not troubled, um, but all these things must come to pass. He said, look, there will be false Christ and false prophets that shall rise and uh, but see that you be not troubled for all these things must come to pass nation shall rise against nation kingdoms against kingdoms famines pestilence earthquakes and look at the earthquakes we just had another earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone just happened as I was coming on the air a 4.5 earthquake hits Bandon Oregon. Here we go. You had them three mega earthquakes over there on that Cascadia subduction zone fault line. Three mega quakes yesterday up there off the coast of Canada in Port Hardy, Canada. And that was, of course, a 6.6, .6, a 6.8, a 6.5. Now you got a 4.5 right over there off the coast of Oregon. So uh, it's getting dangerous, guys. It's really, really getting dangerous. Max, you got to help us. We're, we're, up, we're up against it here. Max, would you read the book of Jude? Hey, Jude, don't be so sad. Take a sad song and make it better. That was almost too high. Remember what the Bible says. Here we go. Max, would you read Jude from the King James Version of the Bible? The Epistle of Jude. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. But there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Not good! I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that right. believed not. Right. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left to their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication, and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Mm. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Kor. These are spots in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit twice dead, plucked up by the roots. What? Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, 
The seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints yeah! to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are murmurers, yep. complainers, yep. walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your own most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Praise God. And of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, aiding even the garments spotted by the flesh. Mm. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. Such a powerful chapter, such poetic uh, exhortation by the brother of Jesus Christ, the natural brother by the name of Jude. But such a profound prophecy telling us of the things that are going to happen in the end times just before John receives the book of Revelation. It's here in your canon. It's in the King James Version of the Bible, and it certainly is worth reading. It shows you, don't speak evil of dignitaries. And look what else it says. There'll be these ungodly, I mean, seriously, these ungodly men with ungodly deeds that they've ungodly committed. It's just unbelievable and ungodly sinners that have spoken against the Lord. I mean, so these are all part of what we're going to deal with in this end times. There's no question about it. Let me get right into it here. We've got a lot to cover. We have breaking news. It looks like Theresa May may be gone. A vote of no confidence may be going to happen tomorrow. Here's what we're finding out. Uh, breaking news. And that is an unnamed source has told Paul Waugh of the Huffington Post that 48 letters required to trigger a vote of no confidence in Theresa May have now been sent to the parliament. If that's the case, and that's the information, word on the street out of the United Kingdom, if that's the case, they could vote a no confidence vote and Theresa May would be removed as the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. Why is this happening? Because her slow, soft approach to Brexit. And when she, uh, she said yesterday she was 95% done. Look, these people voted in July of 2016 to Brexit out of the European Union. Here we are in late October two years, uh, two th 2018, and now she's saying that they're not going to be done until December of 2020. That's two more years. The people are freaking out in the streets, and uh, uh, they're saying, what in the world? And there was other people saying, hey, let's re-vote on it again. Maybe we should stay. You talk about chaos. So remember who was the prime minister when this uh, vote took place to Brexit? It was David Cameron. And as soon as it happened, he was all, uh, all for staying in the EU. And as soon as that vote happened, he said, I'm done. He resigned. So they voted in Theresa May. She said, don't worry, we'll get it done. Two years later, two and a half years later, she's needing two more years. They're saying, no, no, no. So it looks like Theresa May may be gone and if that's the case, who will they choose? Well, they may choose the guy that 
the Donald Trump of the United Kingdom, they call him. Uh, and so we'll wait and see uh, how this is going to shake out. But again, it's word on the street, but it looks like it's, it's very possible because the Huffington Post now is saying that they had received an unnamed source uh, confirming this. Now, here's another information on this. Uh, here's what they said on Theresa May, and this is big news in the UK. Honestly, uh, folks, only Sir Graham Brady knows for sure if the 48 letters have been submitted, but honestly, I believe it was technically possible, but that no, uh, look, the prime minister would want to be responsible for handing in those final four letters. They knew there were 44 letters that had been sent in, but uh, Mrs. May may be removed from her role. An anonymous report, also the Sun is reporting that two of their colleagues that they've received would be sending in letters uh, yesterday. And so it's, and it, look folks, it looks like it may be gonna happen. So tomorrow may be a big day in the United Kingdom. If Theresa May is removed, you get a brand new prime minister and it could mean a lot of things, all right? Theresa May is gonna face down her Brexit critics, um, but it may be too late. Uh, Theresa May, uh, trying to face down her fierce critics at a meeting with the parliament tomorrow after a heated debate at her weekly cabinet meeting about Brexit. A senior uh, Tory source has said that Mrs. May was taking the opportunity to talk to the colleagues at the 1922 committee meeting after Tuesday's cabinet was dominated by a no-deal preparations and fears among the Eurosceptic ministers that Britain will get tied into the customs of union, the EU, indefinitely. Matter of fact, Mrs. May was challenged at the meeting by more than half a dozen impassioned ministers to set an end date so that the Britain does not remain in a customs union indefinitely after a 21 month transition period is over. They only got 21 months to get this done. And they're saying to her, you gotta set a date and we gotta make it happen. And so she sets December of 2020 and they're just saying, this is insane. So w folks, we'll keep a close eye on this. Big news coming out of the United Kingdom. Is it gonna happen? We don't know. And what will be the ramifications on a global scale as uh, Trump, President Trump will have to deal with a new, potentially a new prime minister, all right? So uh, things are, and then you got uh, information today that Russia's president, uh, president Vladimir Putin, uh, said he wants to come and meet with Donald Trump. They want to get together in November. Trump said today while sitting in behind the Oval Office desk, said, hey, Looks like we might be going to work this out. I, and there's no date set. I'm letting the guys work on it, but it looks like it might happen in November. So uh, a lot of changes going on, and, the, and uh, we're going to wait and see what happens. Now, while that's going on, let me tell you, there was an earthquake, 4.5, that hit Bandon, Oregon. Uh, this is huge because that's on the Cascadia subduction zone, the Cascadia fault line. It just happened as we were going live on the air. Matter of fact, there's been 39 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. And I want to look at them because here's the, let's just look at the ones important. 4.9 Venezuela, 5.7 Japan, 5.2 New Caldona. Uh, 4.7, the Fiji Islands, 4.3, Indonesia, 4.4, New Caldona, 4.3, Fiji again, 4.5, Argentina, 4.6, Japan, and 5.2, the Southern East Pacific Rise, 4.4, the Philippines, 5.7, Japan again, 4.6, Fiji, 4.7, China, 4.8 Colombia and 4.4 Indonesia, 4.7 Yemen, 4.1 again Port Hardy, Canada, 4.4 Indonesia, 
4.5 El Salvador and a 4.5 just hit Oregon. All right. So the earth is definitely shaking and quaking. The devil's back breaking. Are you serious? We're seeing apocalyptic. These are the birthing pains of the end of the, this is the, the era of the apocalypse. Uh, the end of the age. As a matter of fact, the solar winds are blowing on the uh, sun. We had joy. We had fun. There's solar winds on the sun. They're, they're only at 319 kilometers per second. That's normal. No solar flares. No releasing of CMEs. That's fine. No asteroids racing by our heads. That's great. 47 fireballs. A lot of them are debris from Halley's Comet that we're going through. But we can deal with all of that right now. What we can, but we have to look, keep an eye on the green, the mean green comet 46P. It looks like it's going to, it's, it's huge. It's, it's bigger than Jupiter. And it's coming straight toward the Earth. It's the mean green comet 46P, it will come so close to the earth that it will be the, one of the 10 closest comets in, in history of the space age that we know of. That's how close this comet is going to come in proximity to our planet. About 11 kilometers, 11 million kilometers away. Mm, about 6 million miles. Still, that's the closest Oh, that's one of the top 10 closest comets ever, okay? So keep an eye on it. Uh, it's, it's, it's important that we stay awake over here. California, stay awake! Because you never know if there's going to be an earthquake over there by you, okay? Uh, so uh, we'll, stay, we'll stay focused on that. But this uh, Cascadia subduction zone, that's really important. Uh, speaking of things that are important... New Jersey, we have breaking news this afternoon in New Jersey. Six kids are dead. Twelve kids are very sick. An outbreak of an unknown virus that's uh, apparently it's a strain of a um, called an adenovirus, but it's some kind of mutated strain. We've never seen it before. It's in a nursing rehabil rehabilitation center where there's a lot of sick children. Six of the kids have died. Twelve are very sick in Haskell, New Jersey. Matter of fact, these six children are dead. Twelve others very sick following a severe viral outbreak at the re Rehabilitation uh, Center in New Jersey. The State Department of Health yes, or today confirmed these 18 cases of an adenovirus at the uh, Wanaku Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation in Haskell County, uh, New Jersey. Adenoviruses usually cause mild illnesses, but the health department says that this outbreak is particularly severe. It's affecting medically fragile children with severely compromised immune systems. The strain has been particularly associated with disease in communal living facilities. And the department said in a statement that the combination of the worst strain of an adenovirus together with a fragile population has led to more severe outbreaks. The facility has been instructed to not admit any new patients until the outbreak ends. And the health department team is at the facility. An inspection team was also there. And uh, that was on Sunday. The team on Sunday found minor hand washing deficiencies. And the department also is continuing to work closely with the facility on infection control issues. Folks, this is an ongoing investigation. The Wanaku Center administrator Rowena Bautista issued the following statement. She said the Wanaku Center for Nursing and Rehabilitation has recently experienced some of the cases of the adenovirus in its pediatric 
unit. The facility promptly notified all appropriate government of agencies when the virus was initially identified, including the New Jersey Department of Health, the Pasick County Department of Health, the Communable Disease Services, the Disease for the Center for Disease Control. The Wanakue Center continues to fully cooperate with these agencies and has sought out their medical guidance with respect to this virus. As a result, the facility staff have diligently implemented all available infection control and prevention measures in order to try to protect the health and safety of the Wanakue Center's residents and themselves for that matter. So uh, we got a serious situation. You know, Jesus said in the last days, besides, you know, he said there would be these pestilences, these diseases, plagues would come upon the earth. And so uh, pray, would you please pray for the families of these uh, children who have died and, and also pray for the kids that are sick and pray for the rest of the patients in that facility and the staff that they can get past this horrific situation in New Jersey. Speaking of horrific information or situation, we have a polio or something very similar to polio outbreak. Sister Heidi giving me this information this afternoon. According to Science News, a mysterious polio-like disease has stricken as many as 127 people. That number has went up since she printed this. It's now over 165 cases of what looks like very similar to polio. But there's no cure for this acute um, polio-type uh, uh, infection. It's a virus. It's very mysterious, according to the CDC. U.S. officials are investigating an outbreak of a mysterious polio-like disease that has caused weakness in one or more of your limbs. This rare disease, acute, uh, also known as AFM, have stricken uh, about 165 people, mostly children in 22 states so far. And this is as of October 16th. But... Uh, these cases have been confirmed in the United States so far. The CDC has been unable to figure out what's causing the outbreaks. This is a mystery, said Nancy Messaniner, director of the CDC's National Center for in, in, in immune, Immunization and Respiratory Disease in Atlanta, Georgia, and said during a news briefing, we haven't solved it yet. Although the disease is frightening, Fewer than one in a million people in the United States will get AFM every year. But based on CDC data collected since 2014, patients need to know that the acute disease is very rare, even with the increase in cases that we're seeing now. And even so, the CDC recommends that patients who develop sudden weakness in their arms or legs seek immediate medical care. So what's causing it? You know, polio, we've solved polio, I thought. And this isn't polio, but this is something very, very similar to polio. And it's very concerning that this is going on. I want to welcome all of you that are live with us tonight everywhere. Those of you at PaulBigleyProphecy.com. I want to say hi to everybody at Periscope. Those of you at New Livestream, Roku, Satellite Television, our backup YouTube channel, which is Paul Begley Prophecy Channel. Everybody uh, watching the archives, whether you be at my normal uh, Paul Begley, uh, my normal channel, which is Paul Begley on YouTube. Also, maybe you're watching on Google Plus archives or Twitter archives or Periscope archives or new live stream archives or the archives at my website at paulbegleyprophecy.com or maybe the archives on Blogger. You know, wherever it is that you're watching this, if, 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 listen, we need to pray one for another. We're living in the end times and uh, we're living in the danger zone. Really, really, we are. Don't get me started with Yellowstone danger zone. But you know what? 
I'm gonna tell you what I, I'm gonna tell you what I really believe. Cascadia subduction zone is more dangerous than Yellowstone. No, no, it's not that it's worse possibilities from it. Yellowstone would certainly blow blow up and destroy at least the Western Hemisphere for the most part. But this, to be honest with you, Yellowstone may never blow in our lifetime or even in the next hundred years if time lasts. But you can know this, there's no way that Cascadia subduction zone is going to last another hundred years. No way, okay? Neither will the New Madrid fault line right down the center of the United States. Neither will San Andrea fault line. No. And neither will those Canary Islands. That thing's going to break off and, uh, and, and there's going to be an earthquake. It's going to break off half the mountain. It's going to slide into the, to the ocean. And oh, by the way, I can promise you that the Mount of Olives is going to have an earthquake so powerful, it's going to split in half. So, I mean, look, the Bible says there's going to be great earthquakes. So let's get real here. We're in the end times and let's get real because you don't know when it's going to happen. Oh, by the way, speaking of kids are dying and are very sick in New Jersey with this strange virus that no one knows what it is. We have this unknown polio-like virus killing ch children, making them very sick in the United States. But we have an Ebola, another Ebola outbreak. It's in the Congo. And here's the problem. The rebels are in fighting with each other and won't let borders without, I mean, doctors without borders, won't let the CDC in there, won't let the World Health Organization in there. So guess what's happened? As of tonight, 238 people have contracted Ebola this month and 155 of them are dead, which is a 65% rate. And, and here's why they're dying. No doctors, no medication. Nobody can get in there. They won't let them. So people are passing this around and they're dying like flies in the Congo. And if they don't let these doctors without borders in there, if they don't let the World Health Organization in there, if they don't let the CDC in there, if they don't let the Red Cross get in there, this thing is going to become an epidemic of biblical proportion, a pandemic. And because there's civil war going on, because it's getting ugly over there, we can't get access. People can't get access. The doctors, the nurses, the uh, con infectious control personnel can't get in there. Can't get in there. What are we going to do, folks? What are we going to do? And so this is part of the problem that we're dealing with and we're going to deal with these things in the last days, the Bible says they're going to, you know, they're going to cry for the rocks and the mountains at some point. But look, it's going to get worse. Plagues, disease, famine, earthquakes, hailstones, uh, droughts, uh, 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 wars, rumors of wars. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are about to ride. Matter of fact, that first horseman. Of course, breaking the first seal would be the white horseman. We're not talking about Jesus returning on his white horse with 10,000 of his saints. We're talking about the one lone horseman, the Antichrist. And I believe he's getting ready to get saddled up. The beast that says in Revelation 13 is about to rise. And people need to understand that these apocalyptic signs that are taking place all over the globe are all pointing to such a time as this, like we've never seen before. So it's getting disturbing, it's disturbing. Uh, right here in my hands, I have a full report on those two funeral homes in Detroit, Michigan. Sister Heidi has done a phenomenal job with this information, who the owners are of the nursing, of the, excuse me, of the funeral homes. Why was there 74? dead babies, either in the freezers or in the attic. I can't say no more. I just can't because it, they have new rules and guidelines now here at YouTube. 
even on this backup channel, I gotta be careful. So what I did is I did a Patreon on it. I can't, because you know, there's one thing is you can't, you gotta deal with all kinds of regulations now. What they call hate speech, which is just simply just telling the truth. But, and then you have this no shocking, uh, disturbing and uh, verbal information, okay? So there's some, the rules are very, so here's what we gotta do. Uh, the best way to handle this story is Patreon, okay? And so Heidi did a tremendous job getting this information to me. It's very disturbing. It's, it's very deplorable. And that's, that's actually in the, in the deplorable condition. It was not just the remains they found in these two different funeral homes, but it's the deplorable conditions they found inside. That's all I can say. Watch the uh, Patreon video for more information on this. It's very, very disturbing. And if Jesus isn't coming back, he will soon. If Jesus hears this, let me just say this. If Jesus reads this article, he's coming. Okay? That's how bad it's getting. That's how bad it's getting. Liars, murderers, thieves, whoremongers, idolaters, false accusers, spiritual wickedness, diabolical, devious, malice, beyond my comprehension. And I, you know, look, I've been preaching 34 years, guys. Seriously. I mean, I've seen a lot. I've been, I've dealt with a lot. I had a guy choked me one time in all, during an altar call in the prayer line. Literally just choked me. Never seen this guy before in my life. He's standing up there in the prayer line. I'm going around praying for people. I come to him. He just goes for the, goes for the jugular. And I couldn't speak. All I could do was whisper the name of Jesus. And when I did, he fell right back into the front row of the pew. Just like, like he got hit with a, like an angel shoved him. It was amazing. And then when he fell into that pew, uh, then two of the deacons got him, and that was the end of that. They packed him out. I never seen a guy again. I, you know, we didn't do anything to him. I'm saying he just removed him, and then he disappeared. But look, there's demo demons, demons in disguise, guys. There's demons in disguise. And so. I'm trying to be nice. I, you look, look, guys, I'm really a pretty calm. Uh, I'm a loving. I have a lot of joy. I love people. I'm, I can be humorous at times. But also, I can be passionate about some of this stuff. And, and, and I, I just get tired of it. You know, i got right here a, a little pocket constitution of the United States. And, and I'm just trying to understand. Isn't there, aren't we supposed to have... Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I mean, isn't that part of the Constitution? Can I just look for a second? You know, I, uh, I just, I'm getting tired of the, what seems to be nothing but lies and, and, and treading on other people's constitutional rights. It just doesn't feel right. Um, okay. There's all kinds of these little sections of the Constitution. I'm looking for a certain clause. I should have studied this out before I came on the air. But uh, there's a clause there. Uh, I'll find it. Give me one second. Maybe, maybe I'll find it. But it, it seems like it per would pertain to this funeral home situation. Uh, for some reason, I feel like that it should be a part of that. Uh, maybe not. May have issues. I may. I may have to go ahead and study more on it. Okay, forgive me for that. Because, I, but let me look. Though, wait a minute. Uh, okay. Time. Natural born citizens. No. Um. State of the union. No. 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 no, 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 no. Good behavior. Judges of both of the Supreme Court shall hold their offices during good behavior and shall at st uh, stated times receive for their services compensation. No, that's not what I'm looking for. Hang on a second, okay? Give me just a second. Hang with me. 
the Congress, you know, the Constitution, uh, the records, um, so Congress. Oh, I know, I should have done this, but maybe I'll spot it. I, I, I really wanted to read this one section. Oh, I don't know. Constitution. Okay, wait a minute. I'm getting close now. That's a declaration. Can can you guys hold with hold on? No persons can do this. Okay. Wow. All right, I'll find it. I, I I'm sorry. I was not. I would not prepare. I just thought I would just open it and look right in there and be, but uh, it's just not there. Okay, it's in there. I just I can't find it. I'll try to have it for you by tomorrow. It's good stuff. Uh, you know, it just, uh, it just, it's frustrating to me. But there's a clause in there that really, when you read it, it would, it would say that whatever's going on in that funeral home in Detroit, that they're literally breaking the Constitution. And if they're breaking the Constitution there, then they may be breaking the Constitution all over the place. Um, and it really does have to do with the rights of the unborn. But anyway, I'll find it and maybe I'll talk about it tomorrow if I can. And I, uh, mm, I, read it, I read it the other day and I was like, what? Anyway, so we got all this going on, okay? We got all this going on and, and instead of things getting better, it's getting worse. Now we got to tell you about what's going on with NATO. NATO is doing a major, I mean a major military buildup right now, incredibly uh, a military buildup that was the biggest massive military exercise in the European Union, in Europe since the Cold War. 50,000 troops, 29 different nations, aircraft carriers, uh, we're talking uh, uh, all kinds of tanks and armored vehicles and, and fighter jets and troop movements and all kinds of stuff. Now, they're doing it up in Norway, but Russia, very upset about it, saying it's, it's a, a provocation. Look, they're 600 miles from the Russian border, but still the Russians, very upset. But the Russians just did the largest military drill in the history of Russia and we didn't cry about it so we got to see what's going on with Vladimir Putin I understand I'm, I'm glad to hear that Putin boot scooting Putin I'm glad that he's coming that he and Trump are going to set down I really am I don't care what the media says we need to meet with the Russians the president of the United States needs to meet with the president of Russia and they both at times need to meet with China and there needs to be an understanding. We, we're not going to agree. And we got to protect each of us, got to protect our own countries and interests. But let's be sure we're not going to do something stupid here and somebody try to uh, take on one of the other superpowers and put the entire world in a state of chaos. I mean, cooler heads have got to prevail. And I really believe that Trump, no matter what the media says about him, that Trump's not... You know, he's not an idiot. He's not going to try to fight with China or fight with Russia. And neither will Putin or President uh, Xi. I mean, Jinping knows that it wouldn't be none. But guess what, guys? You got people, you got the groundswell, you got folks in the ranks that are looking for any way possible to create this chaos. They want control out of chaos. They literally want control out of chaos and that's what creates the danger that's what creates the possibilities of uh, something going absolutely haywire and uh, and uh, you heard what Vladimir Putin said this week I think on Saturday it was I can't remember but the last three or four days he said look all Russians in a case of a nuclear war all Russians will go to heaven he said, because we're not going to ever fire the nukes first. If nukes get fired at us, we're going to respond and, you know, be, but we'll go to heaven because they started it. So, I mean, that's his words. That's his belief. So 
maybe that's a little comforting to know that it, you know they'll never pull push the first. And let me just say something. Kim Jong Un, we're still working diligently with him. Mike Pompeo and President Trump and everybody. We got teams of people there. It's it's slow, but South Korea's involved. The United States, uh, every, you know, look, everybody's playing along here, bringing him along. So keep praying. Please keep praying uh, that this situation with Kim Jong-un continues to improve in a positive way. I mean, and and that's what we want to see. All right. So keep praying about that. Uh, But there's some other situations right now in the Middle East. The King Jordan, the King of Jordan, King Abdullah, wants to take back. He is breaking. He is saying, I'm putting an end to the 25-year agreement, peace for land treaty. And here's part of the deal was this. Uh, There's a thousand acres or so of gorgeous farmland that's really in Jordan, just over the border, but it's owned by Israeli farmers who've been farming that land since 1920, 98 years. And so they've been allowed to live in Jordan and plant all of the farm and yet go back and forth across the border into Israel and to be Israeli citizens. In other words, live like this is Israel, even though they're really in Jordan. Jordan is saying this this was part of the deal as part of a, a peace deal. Meanwhile, the Temple Mount would be managed by Jordan, even though it is in the center of Israel. And this was a way to keep peace in the Middle East. But Jordan has decided they don't want to renew the contract with Israel, that they are, they want the land back. They want to kick the Jews off their farm, take their property from them and claim it for the government of Jordan. Now, will Israel say, why do you want to do that? Let's not do that. Let's continue to keep peace. Folks, this is huge. Prophecy alert. This is huge because Jordan's going to do this But what does that mean for Israel? Does Israel still got to let Jordan manage the Temple Mount? Or is all bets off? I've got information for you. While we were in Israel this week, there was a crane over by the Temple Mount. Huge crane. And they were building foundations. If you look at the uh, Temple Mount, If you look at the wall, what's called the Western Wall, and there's a plaza in front of that wall. Well, if you keep going back in that plaza, you will, there's a, they've put up a temporary barrier, and behind that barrier is massive construction going on. They've laid the foundation for massive building. So we were talking to some people. I looked right at it and said, what is this? Because that was not there when Heidi and I were there in May. And I was getting ready to go and pray at the wall. I had all of our prayer requests and our, uh, that were taken to the wall. And we were there, and, and I said, what is this? And this crane was bringing in more rebarb and bringing in more bricks. I'm like, what are they building? And there was a gentleman there who said, Pastor, that is the foundation for a brand new museum. And that over there, that's the foundation for the high priest dwelling quarters. I said, what? The high priest? What would the high, why does the high priest need a place to dwell, to live in? And he looked at me as if to say, are you serious? It's because they're going to build the temple on the temple mount and the high priest and several other priests, you know, uh, from the, uh, Probably the Sanhedrin, some of them will be living there. And also there's a museum that can be built there so people can go in and learn more and more about the culture. Guys, this thing is coming. And meanwhile, the train, the train tracks are on their way from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. And the train tracks, and they've already, uh, they're building the tracks headed in that direction. They're going to build the Trump train station. And that's to help bring people into the Temple Mount to worship. We're not just talking Jews to worship, but Muslims to worship and Christians to worship. All of them, 
You're going to have Muslims up on the Temple Mount worshiping in the al as Mosque and praying over at the Dome of the Rock. You're going to have Jews praying on the Temple Mount in their brand new third temple. You're going to have Christians walking around uh, on the Temple Mount praying, uh, seeking the footsteps of Christ. The three religions of the apocalypse are converging in the city of Jerusalem. I'm telling you folks, we're living in the end times. They're building, they're building the high priestess dwelling quarters. They're building a museum. There's a crane up there. What? This is serious. It's coming fast. All of the, the, the seven silver trumpets are in the temple institute, ready to go. The golden shoe bread table in the Temple Institute, ready to go. The golden altar where the sacred incense will be burned, already ready to go. The high priest's garments with the head, with the crown and the headdress and the right colors and the pomp and the little tassels and the breastplate with the 12 different stones all represent the 12 tribes of Israel. It's all set in, it's in there. You can look at it. The Ark of the Covenant, if they don't, if they don't bring out the original Ark of the Covenant, they have one already built that they will use. But they're already saying they have the Ark of the Covenant. So folks, if you're not serious, I'm, I am serious. What? We're in the end times. The red heifer. What do you want me to do? It's the 70th year of Israel's a nation. The fig tree generation has arrived. And guess what? The president of the United States declared Jerusalem the capital of Israel. And he moved his embassy there on the very day, May, May the 14th, 2018. Are you serious? And then we have a blood moon. Over Jerusalem, the longest blood moon of the century, a sign in the heavens. And then the birth of the red heifer, the first red heifer in 2,000 years that qualifies for the dedication of the temple. And then the sacred incense was found in 1992 after they found, studied the Copper Scrolls in that cave in the Qumran and, 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 and look, and we've already sat down and talked to the people who helped find it with, it's amazing what's going on. In other words, you're in the last days. You're in the end time. What else do you want me to say? The Bible's coming to life right before our very eyes. Are you saved? I mean, seriously, are you serious? Are you saved? It's time to get right with God, folks. It's, it's time to really consider where you're going and when you're going. Where are you going? Have you given your life to Jesus Christ? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Has your soul made ready for His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I mean, seriously, folks. You have to ask yourself a question. Are you going to let the coming of Christ pass you by? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Savior, Savior, hear my heart.
humble cry while on others thou art calling do not pass me by i'm sorry my throat's a little tired it's late are you saved would you come to christ can i pray with you tonight can i pray with you tonight i'm going to play one song and then i'm going to pray with every person that wants to be born again. And maybe you need to rededicate. Look, let's not wait, okay? Let's not wait. Because Jesus, he's willing to lift you up. Jesus is willing. Just type, I want to be saved. Just type, I want to be saved. Laura Shine wants to be saved. God bless you, Laura. Took him by the hand. Robert wants to be saved. This is your moment. When times got tough, Jesus lifted him up. I'm sure that Jesus has never left me, and he's been closer than a friend. When the storms of life gather around me and I'd remind myself again Joseph and wants I'd to be saved Joseph nothing to hold on to I cried out to Jesus the one thing I could do Jamie wants to be saved Took me by the hand and led me out of the troubled water I was in. Oh, when times got tough, Jesus lifted me up. Oh, yes! With Peter that night in the storm But I think I know how he felt Surely wants to be saved When Jesus lifted him up The power of God Took him by the hand And led him out of the trouble Water he was in When times got tough Jesus lifted him up Jesus lifted him up Folks, Laura Shine wants to be saved. Robert wants to be saved. Joseph wants to be saved. Jamie wants to be saved. And Shirley wants to be saved. And I just feel the Spirit of God so strong. Can I have two more minutes of this song? Whoops. Two more minutes of this song. 
never left me And he's been closer than a friend This is your moment When the storms of life When they gather around me And I'd remind myself again I'd know where to run Nothing to hold on I cried out to Jesus The one thing I could do Oh, then Jesus lifted me up Took me by the hand And led me out of the trouble Water I was in Times got tough. Jesus lifted me up. Derwin Lopez wants to be saved. Peter the night and the storm. But I think I know how he fell. Derwin Lopez. Jesus lifted him. Took him by the hand And led him out of the trouble The water he was in When times got tough Sonny, 1433 wants to be saved That's Kevin Wilson singing a beautiful song that he wrote. And there's seven people tonight, and I realize that we're not on our main channel, so obviously we're working on the... Whoops. Sorry about that. I realize we're working on our backup channel, and, and so it's tougher to get access to the people. But you know, I prayed and prayed and prayed. God, lift this uh, from off of our people or the souls are breaking my heart there's another one johnny mart martinez wants to be saved god bless you johnny johnny martinez that's the eighth person tonight and i said god to help us he said i want you to work hard and help is on the way and so he told me he said you know people the church the bot the online church they understand this is a spiritual battle and they're, they're praying. You've got prayer warriors that are praying. You've got partners that are going to financially help you through this process. Hang on. But at the same time, there are souls that will be saved. And tonight we have eight people right now. Also, uh, let me just say that Derwin Lopez also needs a healing. He's blind in one eye. So Laura Shine and Robert and Joseph, and Jamie, and Shirley, and Derwin Lopez, and Sonny1433, and Johnny Martinez all want to be saved tonight. And I believe there's others. There's no doubt there's other people who want to be saved, who are watching this live or on the archives. Thousands will see it, different social media outlets. And if you're watching right now, whether this is live or archived, and you want to be saved, you pray with me right now. Pray to Jesus. Pastor Begley can't save you. Pray to Jesus and we'll pray. You can repeat after me if you'd like. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. I want to be set free. I'm repenting, Lord. Tonight I'm being honest with you. I'm being real with you, God. Today is my day. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God. 
And I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to come into my soul, to come into my mind and set me free, to save me and cleanse me with his precious blood. I simply believe. I believe. I do. I believe. I believe. I believe. And I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that he rose from the dead. I believe that Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of the living God, has ascended into heaven and that he's coming back, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace and send the healing power, God, I pray, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. There's only one way to God. There's only one way to God. Welcome to the family. They can take his name off the news. They can take his name out of prayer. But if they want to get to God, there's only one way there. That's through Jesus. Yes, the Lord. No, that ain't so. It's Jesus. Yes, the Lord.
just said, uh, Brad just said, thanks for loving us, Paul. Well, I can tell you, I love you. I love you guys, and thank you for loving me. I think we're all in this together. Well, I'm so happy for these eight brand new brothers and sisters in Christ. What? I didn't push that button, so where'd that come from? What? I'm just a poor, wayfaring and stranger Traveling through this world below There is no sickness, no toll, nor danger that bright land to which I go. I'm a going there to see my father and all my love. Love wants to Just a go over Jordan. I'm just a go over home. All right, guys, seriously. All right, seriously, <laughs> I want to say to all of you that got saved, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Just before me, where God's redeemed, their vigils keep. I'm a going there to see my mother. She said she'd me. of home shining before me I'm just a gold oh yes so we're gonna turn that off there's somebody's got a playlist here and it happens to be on it uh guys let me just say right now quickly i'm just so glad for you that got saved tonight we've had at least eight people saved them I'm, I'm sure there's probably others as well and no doubt there is i just i tell you god is saving people this is the salvation station that's what it's all about i want to encourage you to get baptized find a pastor find a church maybe it's a messianic congregation somewhere out there where you live all right, now I've been blessed this year to baptize 174 people. It's been a great year to, for, for personally for me to get to baptize people. And, uh, and I'm just excited about it. But I can't baptize everybody. And I, I'm sure you can find somebody there. Okay, so do that. Tell them you got saved. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Did you see the video I did today? Prophecy alert. 
the fire is about to fall. I think it said the, the, the fire is going to hit or something. Um, now, if you need a Bible, you can ask for it. We'll send it to you for free. Matter of fact, here's the email address. It's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. That's MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. Just send an email. Give us your name, your address, zip code, and we'll send you a Bible for free, and we'll pay the postage. Now, if you are sick and need an anointed prayer cloth, we have, the, we have those. We anoint them with oil. They got healing scriptures on them, and we send them out by faith. And we expect God to heal you because I mean, the Bible says he sent his word, and he healed them. Matter of fact, they took handkerchiefs from the Apostle Paul and sent them to the sick, and they were healed. I'm not Apostle Paul, but... It's the, it's the act of faith is what I'm trying to say. Jesus is the healer, okay? Now, if, uh, and uh, there may be somebody that needs a blanket that's very, very ill or a, a, a chemo cap for those that are going through chemotherapy. We will send those also. And uh, we couldn't do it if it weren't for our faithful partners of Paul Begley Prophecy Ministries. That's right, you, you, the faithful partners, the online church, solid, strong believers in God. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for being faithful. If you'd like to give tonight, just go to my website. Hit the easy button. Just go to publiclyprophecy.com and give tonight. Just go there and donate and give. All right? Now, if you haven't ordered the, uh, if you haven't ordered your four-part CD, it's a four DVDs. Excuse me. They're four DVDs. The Final Day's Prophecy. The Final Day's Prophecy, it's four DVDs, a powerful uh, teaching and interview. It's Pastor Paul Begley and Dr. Irvin Baxter. Uh, and we, there's four DVDs. We dis, each DVD has a separate teaching and uh, powerful information. The first one's called The Final Peace Deal. The second one, the red heifer. The third one, the mark of the beast. And the fourth one, the two witnesses of the Lord. Get all four of this dynamic teaching in one DVD packet for the ridiculous price of $25. Seriously, that includes me shipping it to you. I mean, that's ridiculous. Four DVDs with Pastor Paul Begley and Dr. Irvin Baxter. This may never happen again where we can get this kind of a DVD set put together with two of some of your favorite Bible prophecy teachers. But I want to get this to you. I think it's so important. I'm only going to have about 100 copies of them. They're arriving next week. You got to get your order in so that you're sitting over here on the pile. And when they hit the door, when these hit the door, they're, we're going to turn them on a dime and send them straight out. You got to get yours. And they'd make a great kit, uh, Christmas gift if you want to buy one for your mother or for your father or for your brother or, you know what I'm saying, or your son or daughter or somebody you want to give it to, a friend, a neighbor, somebody you work with. What a great Christmas gift, okay? So please do that. Respond quickly, and let, let's get those out the door to you as soon as you can. If you'd like to give tonight, please do that. As a matter of fact, you can do that by going to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com, or you can also uh, grab your cell phone if you want to give that way. Uh, you can do that by simply... I'm, I, lost my, uh, I lost where I'm at right now. Give me a second. Okay. You can grab your cell phone and uh, simply just text the word give. Just text the word give to um, 765-327-4200. That's 765-327-4200. 765-327-4200. Text the word give. And uh, give whatever you want to do. Because when you text to that number, Publicly Prophecy Ministries will show up on your phone right there. Or you can write me. Sp simply just put a check or money order in the mail. Send it to Publicly Prophecy. That's Publicly Prophecy 1048-B. That's 1048-B. Sagamore. That's one word. Sagamore Parkway West. That's Sagamore Parkway West. Box 33, that's Box 33, West Lafayette, Indiana, 
That's West Lafayette, Indiana, 47906. That's 47906. Thank you for giving. Thank you for being faithful. Uh, praise the Lord. Guys, you don't want to miss tomorrow. Live broadcast at 12 noon Eastern. And also tomorrow night, live at 10 p.m. Eastern, right here from the Salvation Station. Don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. It will be powerful. Good night, everybody. Thank you, all the moderators, for a wonderful job you do, all the prayer partners, all the prayer warriors, and for everybody that's working together in the body of Christ. Praise God. Good night tonight. Good to see people saved tonight. God bless. I'm going to go into the other room, shut down the, uh, the equipment, and say good night to everyone. Let's go in there. Oh, praise God. I'm just so glad, you know, people are coming to Jesus. People are being saved. People are being encouraged. Uh, the word of the Lord is powerful. You know, the Bible says for the word, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. The same was in the beginning with, with God. Without God, nothing was made that was made. But the word became flesh and dwelt among us. It dwelt among us. So, you know, you're begotten by the word, all right? You're begotten by the word of God. Be blessed. Are you serious? Be blessed. You're blessed and highly favored. Are you serious?